welcome to pilots community today's video is basically continuation of my previous uh, video of in flight landing distance and approach speed calculation but uh, today we are going to deal with several failures so if you haven't seen my previous video i would suggest that you go and watch that because this video is going to be slightly more complicated but uh, even if you haven't watched it uh, i hope you'll understand it so i suggest you take a pen and paper and be ready to note down the example before we start i would again like to put up the disclaimer the content of this video is only meant for academic research and your company's sops manuals and documents supersede the information presented here this is our example which we will consider of several failures please note this example down aircraft type a particular aircraft against which you will be opening the qrh the relevant sections of the qrh cg is greater than 25% runway conditions wet flaps as required which will come to know according to our failures landing weight is 65 ton pressure altitude at destination airfield is 4000 feet outside air temperature at destination airport is 22 degrees centigrade destination airport is having 1% down slope in my previous video i have already explained how to calculate this winds 20 knots of headwinds thrust traverses if available will come to know failures we are having green plus yellow fault and ac bus 1 plus 2 failure now this green plus yellow hydraulic fault itself suggests that both the thrust traverses will be inoperative because the green hydraulic system drives the thrust traverses of engine number 1 which is the left engine and the yellow system basically operates the thrust traverses of engine number 2 and our ac bus 1 plus 2 failure suggests that uh, we are going to enter into the emergency electrical configuration let us open the qrh in flight performance landing performance assessment and then method to determine aircraft performance at landing with several failures you'll end up having a table like this which gives us step by step procedure how to calculate the approach speed and the landing distance which i'll show you in my subsequent slides so the first step is the runway condition assessment matrix for which in flight performance landing performance assessment and our cam for landing you'll end up in a table like this in our today's example runway condition is wet so our r cam code is 5 step 2 determination of flap lever position now we are having multiple failures so let us have look at the different failures what the flap lever position is suggested so if you go to the in flight performance and landing distance with hydraulic system failure you can see that for green plus yellow hydraulic failure flap lever should be 3 for our another failure go to the landing distance with electrical system failure in the in flight performance section you'll end up in this table and for elec emmer config which is basically ac bus 1 plus 2 fault flap 3 is suggested now since both the failures are suggesting flap 3 our flap lever position will be 3 but in case of a actual scenario your ecam will also suggest you what should be the flaps for landing so you don't have to worry about this but for examination purposes you will come to know the flaps you are supposed to use by looking at the table so the emergency which is having more effect on the aircraft that emergency should be looked into and that particular flap setting should be used so the third step is the calculation of approach speed for which we'll go to in flight performance landing performance assessment and approach speed determination with failure the formula is given on the top of the table v approach is equal to v ref plus delta v ref plus approach correction so the first step is determination of v ref and against our weight of 65 tons we will look for the v ref now it is not uh, mentioned for 65 tons so we will interpolate between 62 and 66 tons and we will get v ref of 135 knots so the second step is the calculation of delta v ref now this is something new which i haven't mentioned in my previous video since we are facing multiple emergency so we have to choose the delta v ref uh, having higher value so we'll have to go and have a look at the landing distance table of both the failures and choose the higher value of delta v ref so for hydraulic system failure green plus yellow failure our delta v ref is given as 25 and for ac bus 1 plus 2 that is for elec emmer config our delta v ref is 10 knots for 140 knots this is because when we are in elec emmer config uh, the ram air turbine is only functional when our speed is 140 knots so as per 140 knots of approach speed the delta v ref is 10 knots so clearly the higher delta v ref is 25 which is for the hydraulic failure green plus yellow so we shall choose that value and moving on to the approach correction since our delta v ref is more than 20 knots our approach correction will be zero adding all these three corrections our v approach speed comes out to be 160 knots 
coming to step 4 which is the landing distance calculation now here uh, the important question comes is which table to choose to calculate the landing distance because we are having two separate tables for two separate failures uh, so we will choose the emergency which is having more impact so how will come to know we will come to know by looking at the reference distance and if you have a look at the reference distance for uh, green plus yellow hydraulic failure which is 2870 and if you have a look at the reference distance for LHMR config it is 2390 so that's why we are going to choose the table for green plus yellow failure to calculate the landing distance and start applying the corrections so the first correction is the weight correction it is for 66 tons now, since we are 1 ton below 66 ton we go to the bottom of the table which says that subtract 10 meter per 1 ton below 66 ton so we will subtract 10 meters the next correction is the speed correction which is not applicable for us then we have the altitude correction per 1000 feet above sea level add 140 we are at 4000 feet because the elevation at our destination airport is 4000 feet we will multiply 140 by 4 and we will get 560 meters as the altitude correction then we have the wind correction which is only for tailwinds since we are getting headwinds this is not applicable for us moving towards the next correction which is the temperature correction per 10 degrees above ISA add 130 uh, at our elevation of 4000 feet as per the ISA lapse rate of 2 degrees centigrade per 1000 feet at 4000 feet our outside air temperature should be 15 minus 8 which is 7 degrees centigrade so we are 15 degrees centigrade higher than the ISA so accordingly our correction will become 130 plus 65 which is 195 meters simple maths then we have the slope correction since we are having 1% down slope we will add 200 meters now since it is a green plus yellow failure both the thrust reverses are inoperative now the next correction is delta LD now this is interesting because since we are having two failures and we are considering table for uh, hydraulic system failure we cannot forget about the other failure and uh, the contribution of uh, AC bus 1 plus 2 failure needs to be added now the important point is what part of correction needs to be added now for adding the contribution of MRLA config that is AC bus 1 plus 2 failure we need to subtract the reference distance of AC bus 1 plus 2 failure that is 2390 with the reference distance without failure which is mentioned at the bottom of the table which is 1410 because the difference of these two will give us the contribution of the AC bus 1 plus 2 failure so this comes out to be 980 meters so this needs to be added to the final correction so our V approach as per our calculations is 160 knots and our in-flight landing distance after applying all the corrections comes out to be 4795 meters which is very high and our uh, factored landing distance is, uh, is disregarded because uh, we are facing an emergency and our priority is to stop the aircraft before the runway ends so so what is our solution because we hardly will get an airfield which is as long as 4795 meters so the practical solutions for a safe landing will be to burn as much fuel as possible and get low on weight with safe amount of fuel left so that we can land choose an airfield with lower elevation of course in our example we have chosen an airfield with 4000 feet elevation and we have seen how the airport elevation impacts our landing distance don't land with tailwinds usually the runway news will always be having headwinds but if there are tailwinds choose the runway with uh, with headwinds and always prefer an upslope runway because these are the factors that will have an impact on our landing distance thank you for watching this video and if you like this video hit the like button and subscribe to my channel if you have any doubts regarding this video you can mention in the comment section below and i'll get back to you as soon as possible bye bye